Is it you? Cronin's obsession with himself reached intense focus during the late 80s when he composed the series of works entitled The Landscape of a Child of Irony. In these works, he related his own nakedness and the nakedness of his girlfriend to events he had not himself participated in, especially the Vietnam War. Number 19 is entitled General Westmoreland Confronting the Ghost of General MacArthur. Number 20 is The Tet Offensive. Nowhere in this important oeuvre. I remember that young man used to say that the best places to pick up women were art galleries and libraries. I'm glad there is some continuity in this disconcerting world. Ah, they are my friends. Uh -huh. Hi. Hi, Willie. Uh -huh. I don't think I like this ha uh ha. -huh. I saw you talking to that young man. I decided not to interrupt you, that's all. Who is this young man who looks at you with such great interest? He's living proof that history repeats itself. Another thing I do not understand. Here is something I understand. My father's room. Berlin, Vienna. Look! She looks like you. I'm going now. Let's have lunch. I want to talk to you. Yeah, she really does look like you. It's all right. You have lunch with me? Yes, Willie. You see a doctor? I'm fine, Willie. I saw you talking to Adrian Mark. Is that Adrian Mark? You didn't know? Just picked her up on instinct? That's great. Great instincts. I love great instincts. I didn't pick her up. Sure look like you did. I don't mind rejection. Or much of anything else either, if I like the man. My last name is Freemder. I'm the only Freemder in the book. F. Freemder. I use the initial to keep the freaks away. Hey, Bobby, guess who I saw at the Chris Marker show? I'll give you a hint. She's blonde and really famous. No, not Cindy Crawford. Adrian Mark. You don't know who Adrian Mark is? She wrote Jim Appel France. She's one of the best writers alive. Jim Appel France. It's French for My Name is France. It was a huge deal back in the 60s. It, it was made into one of my favorite movies. I'm watching it right now. Well, you must have heard of the Hollywood remake from the 70s, Call Me French. Didn't have much to do with the original. Yeah. yeah well, it was based on it. What? Oh, wait. This is the hottest scene. This is why the movie was banned when it first came out. Oh, my God, this girl is so sexy. Not sexier than Donna, Donna Flax, the waitress? Why do you say... Oh, you're with her now? <laughs> what did you tell me? Later, man.
The movie that changed the way we look at women. J'ai besoin de toi dans 5 minutes. Au ce livre. Je t'attendais. Je sais. On peut recommencer. Naturellement. Tu t'appelles France. Nationalité. Française. Dans l'histoire de ta vie, quel est le premier chapitre Je ne sais pas. Ma naissance, peut-être. T'es toi, t'es pas censé le savoir. Sa naissance, peut-être. Si moi je ne le sais pas, alors qui peut le savoir Sa vie. Dis-nous comment ça commence. Chapitre premier. Elle vit Théo s'avancer vers elle. Elle le vit qui lui écartait les jambes. I've just heard that Fofo has died. Good riddance. Uh, Raymond says that the state will probably auction off your mother's apartment soon. So give me a call here in Paris, will you, when you can. Good morning. How are you? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Oh. Ah. What do we have here? Killer screams for mercy. No. Bronx love story. Mm, repulse. Kennedy's down the drain on page six. Currency traders rule the world business section. And you think the world's going to hell? You're the one who's been saying for the past 30 years the world's going to hell. There's no taste in Hollywood. Either they don't do the good or they don't do it like they used to. And for 30 years, you've been walking past disaster with perfect composure. I think you're mad at me. Oh, come on, Millie. You're mad as you've ever been. It makes me very uncomfortable. Mark Residence. Miss Mark. Uh, who shall I see is calling? Um, it's some young man, um, who's afraid that he might have given you the impression that he was trying to pick you up at that gallery place a couple weeks ago. Oh, he sounds good here. Hello. Uh, this is William O'Hara. We met, well, I, I introduced myself at the, uh, Chris Marker show a few weeks ago. I just, I hope I didn't, uh, offend you. No, you didn't give offense, Mr. O'Hara. O'Hara. How did you get this number? It's in the book. And how did you know I was? I see. I'm one of the most famous women in the world, a fan. I'm delighted always to find an enthusiastic reader. Well, I'm, I'm in the book, too. Uh, it's O'Hara. O'Hara. How could I forget such a nice Irish name? And your first name is William? Yeah, William. William O'Hara. It's uh, the one on Gansevoort Street. I have a very busy day. Goodbye, Mr. William O'Hara, from Gansevoort Street. Why weren't you nice to that young man? He could cheer you up. I mean, Mr. William O'Hara from Guns of Up Street. <laughs> I'll remember. Mm, I know who that's gonna be. Your auction man. Mr. Bangor, please have a seat.
Won't you please have a seat? Thank you, Millie. Yes. Miss mm -hmm. Mark will join you shortly. caught me zeroing in on that lovely, lovely pot. You can't have it. You know, I know everything about silver. That's how I began. I camped out with Judge Untermeyer while he was forming his famous collection. You know the Untermeyer collection? La Marie. Practically all La Marie. Did you get to keep it? What, Millie? Or did you take it away from him? Well, naturally, Millie, when he passed to his reward, at the time of his death, yes, we handled the sale. Well, Miss Adrian didn't pass on to no reward yet. Millie. It's cold out this morning. It's warmer in my study, Harry. I'll be waiting. Hmm. Why don't you like Harry Bancroft? Whenever a man talks a certain way, you back down or you blow up. And he snoops. He's paid to snoop. Snooping is what these people do for a living. This is a large apartment. I've lived here for longer than I care to remember. I have piled things upon things. I'm not sure what's valuable and what's not. I don't like your dough. See, now that's where you used to take a drag on the Chesterfield and you would put it out and you would light another one. He has the manner of someone who's looking for something because he is looking for something, anything, or my possessions. Or in the little drawer in the bookcase when he is supposed to be looking at books and pictures. Off his coat. Brooklyn, New York, sure, but why? Flatbush, sure, of course. Enjoy. If you give me a smile, you get a balloon. All it costs is a smile. <laughs> so, what happened at that gallery? The young man you mean? Young man. What young man? You nearly fainted. Did you see a doctor? I'm not sick, really. At least not in that way. Then why did you almost faint? I saw something. What? I'm not completely sure. How can you be sure a gallery like that? They don't want you to be sure. Even me, an agent, I don't understand my own life. I am born in Vienna. My parents are remote. I'm raised by my nurse. She tells me things about the Kaiser Franz Joseph. 700 years, the Habsburgs are ruling in Austria. My nurse says, one day you will see Habsburgs again. As I leave Vienna, I come to America. Everything is new. Everything is the future. And now the future is shopping channel. OK, everybody shops. So the other day, I shop a vial. And there she is, so-and-so Princess von Habsburg, selling the Habsburg crown jewels, so I know something about seeing things. Winnie, almost every month I have the same dream. It's my 11th birthday party. My mother is trying to say something to me. She tries and tries, and I cannot make out what she's saying. Last time I dreamt this, one of the little girls at the party stepped forward and said to me, I could have saved my mother. And could you have? Of course not. I was in the country, supposedly for the weekend. My mother had packed too many things for a weekend visit. I ended up staying years and years. Where was your mother? In Paris, with Fanfan, her friend. The guy who died just now, whose apartment you want to buy back? It was not his apartment. My mother put it under his name so as to have no hassles with the Germans. 
You were supposed to give it back to us. Once things blew over, things never blew over. And he ended up with the apartment. You never went back. You never looked him up. You never, ever... Fanfan denounced my mother to the Germans. My little Adrian is finally opening up. I'm flabbergasted. Now, listen to me. Go to Paris like a civilized person and write about things, secret things. It'll be a little difficult for me to go back to Paris. But you must. Then it'll be twice that I lost everything. I go through my possessions. Each one cost me something. A lot, maybe. I came here with nothing. Almost nothing, except memories. Oh, oh, oh. sorry. Excuse me, madame. Some of these memories I did not like. I thought I was building something here, and now I am taking it apart, break by break. I have to uncover the secrets before I can tell them. Je dois l'admettre, lorsque vous m'avez appris que nous allions signer ici, dans la gueule du loup, un trait de génie de Madeleine. Et puis, comme je le dis souvent, plus c'est gros, plus ça marche. Et puis Pierre-François aime bien la compagnie du loup. Voilà. Merci. Désormais, ils verront que mon appartement est la propriété de Monsieur Pierre-François de Castellane. Français de souche, je ne sais pas s'il en est. Allez, à Fanfan. Permettez-moi, encore un détail. Si vous pouviez signer de votre véritable nom. Son vrai nom Markovski. Si je ne m'abuse. Madame la comtesse, votre toilette est ravissante. Les robes coupées dans le biais sont tout ce qu'il y a de plus chic. Vous ne trouvez pas Je pense que vous devez me prendre pour quelqu'un d'autre. Votre couturière Mmh, oui, sa fille, je suppose. Vous les fréquentez Les fréquenter Jamais de la vie. Des Israélites, comme tous les tailleurs. Madame la comtesse, c'est une de mes robes que vous avez sur le dos. Non seulement vous l'avez toujours pas réglée, mais en plus vous savez même pas la porter. Tu n'aurais peut-être pas dû. Sans doute, mais je l'ai fait. Bancroft here yet? Uh-huh. How sleazy. I have the feeling that Chris Marker never entered a make-your-own commercial contest for Slurpee Peaches. 
What would Adrian Mark say? Chapitre deuxième. Lentement, Odette s'avança à son tour vers elle. France lui présenta sa joue droite, celle qui portait la cicatrice. Du coin de l'œil, elle vit Odette qui léchait sa cicatrice. No, I never knew him. Not neither of them. Your work brought you in contact with collectors more than artists and writers. Well, yes, I suppose that would have been inevitable, yes. If you are tired or feeling... Not at all. Let's keep going. Well, and this young uh, woman is... It's me everywhere. Is that a problem? No. I mean, uh, could it harm the sale? No. No, not at all. In fact... Okay. by Adrian Mark, the, the, the African Paris, the Venetian Lion, the, the American painting. See. I decided not to be a timid soul. Isn't that right, honey? I said to myself, just do it, like Grant took Richmond. Isn't that right, honey? Yep, just like Grant took Richmond. And I got it, huh? Look, Jack Kerouac's cap, huh? The one he wore? <laughs> Can you believe it? On the road. Right. At auction, that is Jack Kerouac's actual cap. Johnny Depp got the raincoat. Um, I'll be back. Adrian, I my darling, don't it. worry oh. about us. Ernest Hemingway all sold out. Gertrude Stein out of sight. Adrian Ma, get in on the ground floor. Always I give you good advice. The best. Now I say to you, live where a great writer lived. By the apartment. Oh, Willie. We want it all, every stitch. You are just going to love this shirt. Oh, look at that. My. <laughs> my. Oh, my mama just loved paintings and silver. She specialized. Did you ever hear of uh, Paul Delamere, Mrs. Mark? Yes. Uh, as a matter of fact, yes, I did. Oh, well, my mama specialized in him. And now I want to specialize in you. Oh, oh <laughs> must go. Coco oh. Pazzo. Oh. We really must. Really must. Uh, give a vacation there. I'll now speak candle. Philippe Kunst will handle all. Philippe Kunst will handle all. Philippe Kunst will handle all. Like, like uh, Grant took. Um, what did Grant take? Richmond. Millie, Richmond. Millie. Mr. William O'Hara? Lunch then? Mm hmm? When? Why not tomorrow? How about the Odeon? Oh, that's a good idea. Of course I know that place. She blew smoke into James Dean's face. I swear, right before he died. She's one of the most famous women in the world. Okay, okay. You work Friday, Saturday, order what you want, and forget the bill. And a good table. And a good table. 
Okay, so stay close, but don't hover. I know how to wait on celebrities. Yeah, you know how to wait on models. You don't know how to wait on her. You kind of think for all their chicks, man? Hey, I can think for the real thing. Schopenhauer, not Derrida, you know what I'm saying? Don't know. Don't care. Okay, just stay close, but don't hover. There she is. Uh, and don't recite the special. Just bring the menu. All right. Hello? I'm your waiter, Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Hi. Uh, our special today is... <clears throat> The menu. Oh, thank you. Oh, too many things. Please, you decide for me. Uh, Sir? Oh, we'll just take two specials. Oh, two specials. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, what is it, William O'Hara, that you actually do? I read. Uh, at the exhibition where we met? This is what Mr. Jackson of the Times... No, 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 say. not just now, Mr. Jackson of the Times, but William O'Hara. Ah, William O'Hara. William O'Hara is currently working on a video project that will sell a commodity by using very vulgar images. <laughs> Don't worry. We've all done things like that. There's something I'd like to do for myself, if you don't mind. You've already begun, I think, at the gallery. A small portrait. It's all right. I like portraits. And I enjoy the specials and the champagne. There was no bill? I arranged it. An expensive meal. Actually, I worked there. Ha <laughs> ha, good for you. You're an interesting young man. <laughs> you know, you should never pay for a rich person's meal. You rich? Oh, filthy rich. Uh, rich or not, you seem like a worker to me. Nine to five, five days a week, sometimes six. If ever you come to Paris, look me up at 21 Rue de Verneuil. That's the house where I grew up. It's going up at auction, and I'm going to buy it. Where'd you live? Uh, in the meatpacking district. Uh-huh, everybody wants to be working class. <laughs> My grandfather was a butcher. Oh, then you're entitled to. I think so. My mother was a dressmaker, a good one, a famous one. And I think I know how to write a book because I watched her make a dress. A handmade dress must express harmony and beauty like a good book. Hmm. I enjoyed this, William O'Hara. So have I. But I need to see you again. Well, remember, 21 Rue de Verneuil, V-E-R-N-E-U-I-L. Don't forget. Vernier. 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 I remember. Come on, Billy. I need your help. Oh, this cheered you up. Come oh. on. Take care? Yes, please. Here. Oh, the chair. Me? Okay. Mm. It's beautiful. Take it, Millie. In remembrance of me. No, you... It's... It's the best one here. Oh, yes, you're right. By far the best and the one I'm most attached to. How it got from my mother's apartment in Paris to this apartment here in New York is a long, long story. By some miracle, my ex-husband, Elliot Spencer, found it in a flea market in Paris. He knew it was me. Me? Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. You know, Ms. Adrian, sometimes I, I, I think what people don't know about women is just about everything. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Ms. Adrian, oh, hey. Look, um, you know, I really did have a hit. I know, I know many. Really, I used to sing with Wilson Pickett, you know, Wicked Pickett, mm -hmm. you know, Soul Brother Number Two. Really, that's where I got my model that I live by. Ninety-nine and a half just won't do. You got to have a hundred. I was supposed to sing on that song. I don't know what happened. 
Would you mind singing it for me, Millie? Oh, honey, I thought you would never ask, because, you know, you gave me that nice painting, and I don't have one to give back to you. So, but you will sit in the window, okay? I need the light, okay? So, let's go. Yes, it's good light here. Sit down, sit down, okay? But you got to do the, the voodoo dance, okay? Do that. Now, remember, I don't have a band, so this is Wilson, and this is me, okay? Come on. Gotta have all your love, both night and day. Not just a little part, but all your heart. Ninety-nine and a half. Just won't do. This is me. Just won't do. Yeah. Don't be led in the wrong direction. A man needs love, a little love and affection. Yeah. Ninety-nine and a half. Just won't do. Here's I Okay. Got to have a hundred. I was much thinner, okay. And then my part, the music played, and I came up, and I did my part, okay? Here we go. <laughs> Ninety-nine and a half just won't do. No, no, you got to have a hundred. Oh, bravo, Millie. No profession is completely understood. Auction galleries, for example. People notice the glamour, the high prices. We tolerate it. To some extent, it's good for business. Meanwhile, backstage... Exactly. Hard work, nose to the grindstone, all the little people. In this case, one of the little people has stolen the show. Has been given the show. Now you've lost me. People, Adrienne, are prisoners of their memories. A sunny day in Provence, they are young, they are successful. They pay a call on a great master, Leger, for example. The great man receives them, and really, as a beau geste, they decide to buy a little something, a ceramic, say, or, or a ceramic. In their minds, the beauty of the day, the memories of their youth, the kindness of the artist himself all run together and somehow increase in their own mind, the value of the plaque they have bought. I bought this plaque in Beverly Hills, Harry. It was a rainy day. As you wish. Since we are scraping away romance, I will tell you there are times when my life seems like one long rainy day. <laughs> I thought we were friends. Where did that go? Never mind. Professionally speaking, you promised me a free hand fire sale, so to speak. Everything must go. There are, frankly, two or three things that make the effort worthwhile, as far as I'm concerned. And I find today that you have given the most valuable of these things to the maid. You're talking of my housekeeper, my friend. It was to have gone on the front of the catalog, Adrienne. We need a front page. Without a front page, we don't have a catalog. And without a catalog, redolent of charm and association, we don't have a sale. You get my drift. I get your drift. Give me this plaque. Now, Harry, I'm just going to take this plaque to Provence and heap it over with strawberries. Why not? You leave the house, please. Je vais arriver le 13. Ben, ça nous laisse du temps pour tout organiser. Alors, le 13, le 13, c'est un, un mercredi. Hein? Ah bon, tu es sûr Non, parce que tu aurais très bien pu venir habiter ici, tu sais. Ah bon, bon. Euh, Suzanne t'embrasse aussi, oui. Je t'embrasse, au revoir. Il peut d'autant m'y habiter ici que finalement, je vais aller à Biarritz avec maman. Elliot, I'm coming to Paris. It's decided. Good. Well, look, as soon as you know your flight details, give me a call. I'll come and collect you. No, 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 darling. I don't want to be mad. I want to come into Paris alone.
Millie. Millie. Go into my bedroom. In the chest of drawers is a cardboard box. I want to show you something. Brooch. She designed this. And those, that's what her work was like. My mother was a worker and an artist. I respect your work. I know. Elias Spencer told me something once. He told me that in the army they have a special device that looks into the night. It can find any tiny source of light, draw that light in, concentrate it, and one has enough light to read a map by. In America, Millie, you give me light to read my map. Now, you go back and find your mama and your... I'll try. You know, my mama didn't like this world. Nah. She liked the other world. You know, I'm more like her now than I'm like myself. Like, she... She liked me to sing by myself. For her. I was standing by my window on a cold and cloudy day when I saw that hush will roll in Lord to take my mother away will the circle be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by. There's a better home awaiting. You'll be fine, Miss Adrian. You'll be just fine. Ah, J'aime bien, mais je préfère tes baldis. Ah oui. Un accident grave s'est produit ce matin au Maguette à Lyon, où le gérant d'un restaurant a grièvement blessé un jeune maghrébin qui taguait les murs de son établissement. Le gérant a été arrêté. Mais quelle horreur, cette violence ah, Ça, vous pouvez le dire, on les voit partout. Quelle arrogance, hein, même en plein jour. Et la France n'est plus ce qu'elle était. Bon, vous savez, il n'y a pas que la France. Hein. En Amérique, c'est pareil. Ah bon, mais je croyais qu'ils mettaient les émigrés à la porte. Les émigrés oui, je ne savais pas que vous alliez problèmes avec les Arabes, je crois que c'était plutôt avec les Nègres. Si vous voulez mon opinion, madame, nous, les vrais Français, dans la famille, a vécu en France depuis Charlemagne, on devrait avoir un vote pour chaque génération, en remontant jusqu'à Charlemagne, jusqu'à Charlemagne.
Come on in. My God, you look marvelous. Well, you don't look bad yourself. <laughs> Give me those pants. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six. You know what, Elliot? I think one is missing. How can you say I look marvelous? I feel like a wreck. Oh, trouble's back in town. Look, let's not worry about a thing. First things first. Glass of champagne in the garden. Now, show me the way. There are reams of invitations when you have time. Honored this way, honored that. The nicest one so far is that one. <laughs> Snakes swimming in a polluted riviera. Snakes don't swim. Or do they? Maybe they do. Anyway, there are a couple of urgent messages. Ah, oh, Willie. Yes, dear Willie Constant. Earth, have you put up with him for so long? Ah, oh, you're jealous. Yes, I am. You see, I want to be your best boy now. Anyway, Willie, in his best... CIA of old Vienna Manor tried to conspire with me to get you to agree to sell all your papers to a, an attractive-sounding couple from Oklahoma. Texas. Same thing. It really is good to have you back. Mm-hmm. Oh, I could use a little nap now. Yeah. Good idea. Oh, there are some friends coming over later. Oh, not too many, no, I No, 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 just two. France de Jean et Patrick. France. How's he? Oh, his stroke has left him pretty shaky. And Patrice? He's grown. Huh. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen him since he was uh, two years old, maybe. Look. Here we are. Two years old. Oh, he's so sweet. My first meeting with France. France on the set of Lola found again. His first great success. <laughs> we look. Wonderful. It felt like a family. I'd forgotten. Oh. <laughs> Don't tell me you've saved this ridiculous article. Come now. Even the tabloid press had its moments of truth. I suppose you're right. But we all must grow up. Oh! <laughs> we look so perfectly beautiful. Shame it didn't last. Uh, uh, Ça fait si longtemps, France. Oh, longtemps. Mm. Ah, voilà, Patrice. Welcome, France. Mais c'est vrai que vous êtes grand. Bonjour, Adrien. Bonjour, Patrice. You're looking fit. Oh, my God. Oh, France, you really is frail. I thought we'd eat outside. It's such a lovely evening. Merci. I haven't been here long, but I've heard strange things in some in Paris. You wouldn't believe the changes in America and France. They all talk about violence and uh, drug traffic, but it has nothing to do with that. Something just went. Something marvelous, simple, we all loved, took for granted, and didn't understand. And it vanished before we got to understand it. Things have changed here as well, you know. Patrice is doing the most tremendous thing. He's entered the lion's, well, strictly speaking, I suppose I should say, lioness's den, with Lola found again. Oh, my darling Elliot, you are so obscure sometimes. What's happening to his marvelous film? Lola found again is about to be remade, for better or for worse. Every day I talk to this person, trying to get her to understand what Lola is about. She thinks she is Lola. Also, she's completely obsessed with Call Me French. France and Patrice are asking you to do something, to try and steer this Virginia Kelly onto the right course, if we must have this beastly remake. You are the only person who can do it. But is it necessary that there be a remake of Lola? L'argent. Toujours l'argent. Quand veux-tu voir notre Miss Kelly? Demain. S'il te plaît, je le sais que t'aimes pas l'ascenseur. 
Tu appelles ça un ascenseur, toi C'est mieux que les escaliers. Peut-être. En tout cas, pour toi, c'est mieux. Mais... Allez. Tu vas aller dans ta chambre Oui. It's boring. Then tell me how to fix it. I don't tell my auto mechanic how to fix my car. I drop it off. He says thank you. I pick it up the next day. I say thank you. If it's not fixed, I know it. You make it sound so easy. Easy as pie. Le film de mon père n'est pas simple. My father's film is anything but easy. For him, Lola was a beautiful girl living in an old civilization like us. Unfortunately, she lacked the will to understand it. Oh, okay, oh, hold on there, Junior. You're saying that's what Lola found again was all about? Yes, I am. Miss Kelly, Mr. Goldenberg is on the line. Put him on hold and get Stephen on the line right away. Well, let's not make that movie, okay? <laughs> you guys always say that. Spend the money on the marketing. Listen, I'm in a meeting and I'll call you back. What do you mean, let's not make that movie? What I mean is it's not the Lola found again that I saw. What's the Lola found again that you saw? Well, I remember this sexy young girl who was lost in a big old chateau. When her husband finally finds her, she realizes she's had enough of him and wants a divorce. My father struggled to make his movie the way he wanted it. Spare me the Oedipal crap, okay? We're not talking about your father's film here. We're talking about my film. Our film? No. Mind, if I buy the rights to remake Lola... If I let you buy the rights to remake Lola... <laughs> okay, listen. I'm aiming for more than your typical art house crowd in Paris. I'm aiming for the people in Paris, Texas. You have to think big. Patrice, let me give you some advice. Go to the video store, rent the video, call me French. It's a perfect example of what I want you to script for me. Miss Kelly, I know Call Me French. My father directed it from Adrienne Marx's book in 1960. No, the American version. I'm talking about the American version. That was shot here in the 70s, based on the Adrienne Marx book. I see. Don't tell me you know Adrienne Marx. I've known her since I was a child. million dollars for the friendly bear. Have you seen it? Not that I can remember. 300 million dollars. We made so much money in round one that we can sell the video for nothing, which costs nothing. So it's volume we want, volume. Tie in with Smokey the Bear, tie in with Grandpa Grizzly, which was huge for us. We own bears, the concept of bears. It's a very sweet deal all around. And what's this one? 
Oh, a little girl alone in a big house. Rien, nothing, not a pure drudgery from my point of view. But let me show you what I have in mind for Lola. This, this here is Europe today. Basically, everybody falls inside three categories. Either they are already hooked on TV, or they are ready to be hooked on TV, or they love quality films. Therese doesn't really understand this. This is what I'm proud of. We took three years. Well, I took three years to come up with this. If you make a film that appeals to group one, using brilliant material from group three, you will get the ready to be hooked on TV group, group two. The secret agenda is to get group two into the theaters. What do you think? I have to think about what I think. Well, you did it. That's what you already did. Call Me French is my favorite movie. I watch it over and over again. You do? You see, you changed demographics forever. You took people who were reading books and took them away from books and into theaters forever. That's what I did. You bet you did. You changed the world. Now, I want you to help me get Patrice on the right track for Lola. Yes. Where is Patrice? Downstairs in the screening room. I have a little surprise for you. A surprise? Yes, I'd like to show you my favorite scene from Call Me French. Couldn't you just tell me which one it is? Well, yes, I could, but this will show you how I want to attack Lola Found Again. I tell everyone I want to do it in the style of Adrian Mark. Adrian, please, tell us how to make Lola. I'm down on my hands oh, and don't. knees. Listen, you're a marketing genius. Just excuse me. Come on. Mais me dis pas qu'on est en train de regarder le remake américain. Mais c'est celui-là qu'elle aime. T'avais pas compris? Ah non, j'avais pas compris. J'aurais dû. What's this drink called? That is Rocket's Red Glare, Francine. Oh, you know my real name is Francine, but my friends call me France. Mmm. Two more drinks. And what are these called? Twilight's last gleaming. Oh, I just love Twilight. What about my <laughs> Rocket's Red Glare? Mm. Who named these drinks? Francis Scott Key. Who's he? He uh, wrote the national anthem. Je n'ai pas écrit une seule de ces répliques. Ils ont fait venir un autre scénariste après right. moi. You're as an author also. Ah, yes. Are you an author? Yeah. And you are the kind of blank page I like facing every day. Sure you don't ever get writer's block. I've never had that kind of problem as an author. Uh, oh, my. This is <clears throat> some book. <laughs> I want it to be big. You know, have bigness. It's all about scale. Do you know what I mean by scale? Yes, big, bigness, scale. You know, the great thing about you, Adrian, is that you gave them a work of integrity, you know? A work of art that the studio knew how to blow up. You have to have a foundation on which to build. Trust me, I know about this stuff. I've studied it. You know, it's very interesting what you're saying. But I'm not sure I know exactly what you are saying. I'm not sure you want to know. What I'm saying is that without something to exploit, you don't have anything to exploit. Now I understand what you're saying. I told you you didn't want to know. I love it when Sally says, this is some book. She had to have two men to get her to that point. That's one thing I argue with Patrice about. I want Lola to have a dozen men. In the original version of Je m'appelle France, the international bestseller on which the film was based, there were two women and one man. Oh, well, I didn't know that. To tell you the truth, I've only seen the remake. Anyway, it's much better for the women to do the choosing. Better from a marketing point of view? Oh, much better. Think what we could do with Lola. Back then, she was little and people loved her. But together, we can make her big. I have a great title for your remake. Tell me if it's marketable. Shoot. Lola found again, again. <laughs> a Gallic wit. I love it. I want it. I want to use it. So, Adrian, will you hop on the bandwagon with us? We're asking if you want to work on the script for Lola. Oh, script doctor, I'm not. Marketing genius, see, script doctor, no, no, I'm afraid I cannot help you. But both of you, you do have my blessing. 
I'll call you sometime. I think I've had enough. But I haven't. Well, OK. Ugh. Viva la France. <laughs> I like her, and so do you. So do I what? Je dis que tu l'aimes beaucoup plus que tu ne crois. <laughs> tu ne veux vraiment pas voir les choses en face. Quelle chose? She's sweet and malleable. Bring her around when you visit my mother's house tomorrow. À demain. À demain. Ich meine, wer braucht denn solche hohen Decken? Wenn du mich fragst, Kätzchen, sollten wir in jedem einzelnen Raum eine Mezzanine bauen. Schmutz, Schmiere, Staub. Für die Franzosen hat das vielleicht Rede. Ich sage es nicht einfach unsauber. Und jemand soll in diesem Schweinestall gehaut haben. Mittelmeer. Ich glaube, es ist eine ganze Art. Ich meine, das ist ein Mix von Stahl. It must have seemed odd at the time. Yeah, unfortunately, army war for war didn't have enough money to make any change. Hello. Hi, Patrice. Hello. 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 Well, you must be Virginia Kelly. The one and only. I've heard so much about you. Is that so? Oh, most of it good. Die müssen raus, dass sie melden, wir bilden eine amerikanische Küche ein. Ja, mit einer Bar, genau. Also, Rüdiger, schau dir dieses Monstrum an. Jetzt muss hier weg. Ich dachte, machen wir Zentralheizung. Die Komiker haben die auch noch etwas gehört. Die sind halt technisch noch im Mittelalter. Rüdiger, ich sage nur alles. Sie haben sich das ja wohl drin. Oh. What's wrong with you? <laughs> it just doesn't happen to be very Cocteau. Well, I think it is mm. very Cocteau. I guess you just don't care what Cocteau would have thought about it. In my mind, Cocteau thinks anything I want him to think. I used to stand here as a child, inventing stories. I even wrote some of them down. Like uh, the fabulous adventures of Adri Yen, the great empress of China. Patrice, I just figured it out. How we can get Adrian to work on Lola with us. We'll, we'll ask her if we can shoot it here, and then we'll renovate the whole place. She'll want to help us then. She'll make out like a bandit. Is nothing sacred to you? Nothing. Don't use that tone of voice with me. Tu comprends rien. Il n'est pas question d'appartement ou de boutique. Il s'agit de moi et de ma fille. C'est comme si je vous avais vendu. Je ne sais pas, vendu, vendu pour qui, vendu pour quoi. Moi. Même pas vendu d'acheter donné. Toutes les deux. Vous êtes à moi maintenant. Enfin, sois pas bête. Il s'agit seulement d'un bout de papier. Un bout de papier. Mais tu comprends rien. Enfin, pour toi, rien n'est sacré. Rien n'est sacré. Rien. Sorry about what happened earlier. Ashley Emrick is a fascist. He must be confronted. I'm 
sure we meet again. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au fait, comment va ton père Oh, beaucoup mieux. Ah bon. À bientôt. À bientôt. All those people milling about, snooping, and speculating. Thank you. They all seem to want the apartment just as badly as I do. No, they don't. Of course they do. The reasons are different from mine, but who cares about reason? Want is want. In the end, it's just a question of money. I cannot bid higher than eight million francs. If someone else can, I lose. Good God. What got into me? How pathetic. How pathetically selfish. Thinking I could trade in the past 50 years of my life for the first 10. If I lose, Where will I go? You could always stay here. Well, surely there must be something worth salvaging from those 50 years. It gets pretty damn tiring, you know. Playing the hopeless lover. The fact is, for all I know. But don't all editors thrive on self-sacrifice? The plight of the ghostwriter, no? I don't mind being a ghostwriter, that's my job, but a ghost husband. Ex husband. An ex husband. Yes. I do seem to be forgetting that more and more. But you mustn't. I'll fill my glass, huh? Excusez-moi. Vous cherchez quelque chose Madame Marx, s'il vous plaît. Non, il n'y a personne de ce nom-là ici. Adrian Marx uh, Écrivain uh, Famous uh, écrivain Non, ça me dit rien. Uh, je ne parle pas français. Uh... Mais si ça vous dit, moi, je loue une chambre. Ça vous intéresse, oui ou non Ah, ah oui. Oui, uh, absolument. Will the auction be the way it used to be? Candles, etc.? Yes, exactly like they used to be. When the candle burns out, the last bidder wins. We're lucky to find this spot. We'll walk from here. We're late. Don't be nervous. Elliot, English calm doesn't get you anywhere anymore. Premier feu. Je sens qu'on va avoir la Mettre rente à Dour met en vente le second appartement dans le même hôtel particulier. Ah, quand même. C'est pour ça que tu avais changé d'avis Non, je n'ai pas changé d'avis. Non, Condition non. ordinaire en cette chambre, un appartement dans un hôtel particulier. 6 rue de Verneuil au numéro 21. Le lot comprend au premier étage un appartement composé d'une entrée, couloir, galerie, salle à manger, trois chambres, une salle de bain, cuisine, deux débarras, séjour, salon, dégagement. Les enchères seront de 100 000 francs au minimum. Alors nous commençons à 4 millions de francs. Maître Valfron, 4 millions 100. 4 millions 5. 4 millions 5, Maître Ertaud. 4 millions 6. 4 millions 6, Maître Kérol. 
5 millions, maître Nakash. 5 millions 100. 5 millions 100, maître Ertaud. 5 millions 3. 5 millions 3, maître Kérol. 5 millions 4. 5 millions 4, maître Charvet. 5 millions 4. 5 millions 5, maître Renault. 5 millions 5. Premier feu. 5 millions 5. L'enchère est à maître Renault. 5 millions 5. 5 millions 6. 5 millions 6, maître Ertaud. 5 millions 7. 5 millions 7, maître Valbron. 5 millions 7. 5 8. Maître Kérol, 5 8. 6 millions 5. 6 millions 5, maître Charvet. 7. 7 millions. Maître Kérol, 7 millions. 7 millions 2. 7 millions 2, maître Ribot. 7 millions 2. 7 millions 4. 7 millions 4, maître Kérol. 7 millions 4. 7 millions 6. 7 millions 6, maître Valbron. 7 millions 6. 7 millions 8. 7 millions 8, maître Charvet. J'espère qu'il se souvient des moments heureux. Parce qu'il y avait des moments heureux chez lui. Tu te souviens de ton anniversaire hein La robe que j'ai fait pour toi en soi bleu. Oui. Cela veut dire que maintenant, je peux accepter le souvenir des moments de bonheur Bien sûr, tu peux. Tu dois. 9 ,6 millions 6, maître Valbron. 9 millions 600 000. 9 millions 8, maître Ribot. 9 millions 9, maître Herto. 9 millions 9. 10 millions. 10 millions, maître Ribot. 10 millions. 10 millions, maître Ribot. Premier feu. 10 millions. 10 millions, maître Ribot, 10 millions, 10 millions, 10 millions, maître Ribot, 10 millions. Je t'interdis d'être inquiète. Hein? S'il te touche, je les tue. Je les tue. 10 millions. Second feu. Second feu, 10 millions. Maître Ribot, 10 millions. Ah. Et pas. Adjugé à Maître Ribot moyennant le prix de 10 millions de francs sous réserve de surenchère. Je vais encore avoir 10 jours pour venir avec un nouveau bid. Bien sûr, ça doit être 10% plus haut. Avec quoi de l'argent, Raymond Avec quoi de l'argent I'm going now. I just need to be by myself. J'aimerais bien te présenter Virginia Kelly, la productrice de notre nouvelle Lola.
best way to see the chateau. Were they expecting us? It seems awfully quiet around here. I love this place. It's great. It's just what we need for Lola. How do you know? You haven't been inside yet. I just know it. I want it. Get it for me. Just like the Ostrogoths. Well, who are they? People who knew what they liked when they saw it. Rome, for example. Thank you very much, Junior. I'm not sure it was a compliment. Bonjour. Bonjour, madame. I've never seen anyone have a relationship with their father like you have. When I'm with my dad, I never understand anything he's saying. And he speaks in this really loud voice. <laughs> you are very much like that poor suffering girl in Call Me French. You latch on. Isn't that the expression? You think I've latched on to you? I hope so. Invité. Uh, the Ostrogoths. On est invité par les Ostrogoths. <laughs> I'm needed at the head table. Are you sure you have an invitation? <laughs> S'il vous plaît, vous dansez? Moi. for inviting us. You look beautiful, my dear. Treat her right. Au revoir. They're playing the ink spots. The ink spots? Yeah, they're great. The ink spots are even greater than the Ostrogoths. If I didn't care more than words can say, if I didn't care 
Would I feel this way If this isn't love Then maybe I'm wrong But why do I lie awake all night And dream all day long If I didn't care Would it be the same Would my every prey begin and end with just yearning? And would I be sure that this is love beyond comfort? Would all this be true if I didn't care? Forgive me for barging in. I happened to be in the neighborhood, and I thought I'd stop by. We'll continue then. Well, well what ho? I won't bore you with all the little details, but if you will just cast your eye on this figure I'm about to write. Well, we have the jackpot. What are you doing here, Mr. Van Cough? And what jackpot? Honey, it's a lot of money. Hey. Thank you. Uh, please, if you would look um, carefully at the things in this wall, Mr. Bancroft. That's my mama. That's when I married Frank. These are my sons. That is Wayne, my son Daryl, my son Jeremy, whom you've just met. Mm. And this is my friend, Adrian Mark. Oh, and this is my gold record for sales of more than a million dollars. I sang with Wilson Pickett. Hmm. Now, which of these do you want me to take down? Well, Millie. Goodbye, Mr. Bancroft. I'll show you to the door. Should you change your mind? No. William O. Hera. Are you a ghost? May I? Yeah. You're not. Well, if I am, I'm a friendly one. I met you in a gallery in New York, and now you show up near my mother's place. I won the uh, Slurpee Peaches Make Your Own Commercial Contest. It was a thing I was too embarrassed to tell you about in New York. I won a brand new Toyota Corolla, and uh, I don't drive, so I traded it in for the money. And you came to see Paris? I came to see you. And to film you. With your permission, of course. And I got a room right up there. Ah, friendly ghost in the maid's quarters. <laughs> so which apartment is yours? None at the moment. Come on, Mr. O'Hara, let's go and have a drink. This time, lunch is on me. I'm game. William. Yes, Mrs. Mark? I'll let you do your video portrait, but on one condition. Look at me with your eyes before looking at me through your camera. Do you understand? Yes, Mrs. Mark. Adrian. Hello? Hi, Millie. But did you get the apartment? No, I didn't get it, Millie. But I have another chance. It's only a question of money. I have to come up with more money. Well, you just remember what Wilson Pickett said. 99 and a half just won't do. <laughs> oh, keep me safe, Millie. Yeah. Bye. Sorry to keep you waiting. Work, work, work. Mm-hmm. Well, Millie, what do you have in mind? Oh, 
that lovely, lovely portrait. Yes. I want to have it cleaned. Well, it's quite all right as it is. No, I want it bright and shiny. Well, we don't do that kind of work. I suppose I could recommend someone who does. Of course, if you should ever want to sell it. I have a friend with a master's from Harvard. Told me to tell you she used to work at the Fog, a place called the Fog. Now she works with kids. She says that it is a nice painting. One of the best sky. She said that you could just add another zero right here. Please. Mm, and send the money to Adrian Mark. Miss Adrian would be so happy. Dernier peu, 11 500 000. Maître Kérol, 11 500 000. 11 500 000. 11 500 000. Maître Kérol, 11 200 000. 11 millions, éteint. Adjugé à Maître Kérol, moyennant le prix de 11 500 000 francs, d'une manière définitive. Sorry, Adrian, that was clumsy of it. It's my fault. No, no, no. It's this young man's fault. Haven't I seen you before? Young man with camera. This young man is William O'Hara. He's from New York City. He's here at my invitation. Hi, William O'Hara. Good to meet you. Hi, William O'Hara. Oh, oh, hey. uh, okay, uh, okay. Yeah. Everybody relax. Yes, we are relaxed. Okay. You wanted to meet with Franz Legendre? And you met him with the band. <laughs> Here's to Millie. Without her, we all wouldn't be here. To Millie. To Millie. To Millie. Je besoin de toi dans cinq minutes. Tu évites les commentaires, d'accord Nationalité Française. France lui présenta sa joue droite, celle qui portait la cicatrice. Du coin de l'œil, elle vit Odette qui déchait sa cicatrice. take me to see that before. Patrice, you should have taken charge. Name? Virginia. Nationality. American, of course. No, stick to the facts. Nationality. American. 
chapter one of the story of your life. I trace a push to the bench. He sat beside Virginia, putting his arm around her. <laughs> and he said, Yes? What did he say? What did he say? Tell me what he said. Cher Otto, il apparaît que Judith Marc a été arrêtée lundi soir par la police française et qu'après interrogatoire, elle a été remise à des gens de vos services dont elle dépend désormais. Je ne puis imaginer que cette grande artiste cette grande couturière soit détenue comme une vulgaire juive. Moins de moi, l'idée de défendre la race des Dreyfus, mais Judith et Judith, et les Juifs, ce sont les autres. Combien de fois vous ai-je entendu dire c'est nous qui décidons qui est juif et qui ne l'est pas. Cher Otto, en échange d'un regard favorable que vous pourriez jeter sur son dossier, laissez-moi communiquer les noms de juifs dont on m'a signalé les actions malfaisantes et spoliatrices auprès de véritables français. Pendant toutes ces années, tu as cru que c'était moi qui avais dénoncé ta mère. J'aime ta mère. J'ai fait tout ce que j'ai pu pour la tirer de là. Tu as fait quoi Adrienne, j'ai fait tout ce que j'ai pu. Je t'aime, toi aussi. Aimer, ce verbe aimer, c'est si facile à dire, à répéter. Vous lui enlevez tout son sang pour lui donner un pouvoir diabolique. Je suis seulement un pauvre diable qui voulait vivre heureux avec toi, avec ta maman. Et tous ceux que tu as dénoncés, toutes ces mères, ces fils, ces filles... Je n'ai pas envoyé la lettre. Mais tu l'as écrite. Tu aurais voulu que je sois un héros. Oui. Tu aurais voulu que tu sois courageux. Ah, ma chérie c'est raté. Tu l'as tué. Tu as tué. 
tué ma mère. Tu l'as tué. Touche, je l'ai tué. Adrian? Are you okay? No. Adrienne Marc. Seven years old. Wow. Adrienne was very angry with Ping. How could he have made so foolish a comment in front of the Emperor Altum? She told her faithful companion, Liu, to have him executed. But Liu replied, oh no, Grand Empress Adrienne, you must not execute Ping because Ping is a mysterious stranger who every night on the stroke of midnight places those beautiful bouquets in front of the palace door. Ping loves you. All the more reason to kill him. How do we love Adrienne, the Empress of China? Il y en a marre de cette musique de sauvage. Pour la musique. Oh my God. These guys are part of this new right wing movement. Just our luck. Merci. 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 Rentrez chez vous. Non, mais c'est pas vrai. Pourquoi Quel con alors. Tiens. Merci. Vous avez tous vu cette hebdomadaire. Adrienne Marc, vous la connaissez, c'est cette romancière au destin exceptionnel qui revient en France. J'ai pour en parler euh, Achille Emmerich, vous êtes l'homme politique que l'on sait. Vos récentes prises de position contre le retour d'Adrienne Marc. Vous êtes tous là, vous extasiez sur le retour, n'est-ce pas, de celle que vous appelez Adrienne Marc, l'écrivain Matrowski. C'est indigne. Adrienne Marc nous fait l'honneur de revenir vivre en France. L'honneur <rire> Mettez-vous. Non, je vous en prie, temps, monsieur Emery. De New York, votre perruche Ségosi a critiqué la France. Que livre après livre, elle nous crache dessus. Qu'elle préconise un mode de vie cosmopolite. Pur fantasme qui n'est accessible qu'à elle-même. Et voici qu'elle revient donner des leçons à des gens qui ont été élus par les Français. Il y a un seuil de tolérance, voilà tout. Mais euh, madame Markowski prêche ses solutions à l'américaine. Les ghettos, les lobbies, euh, la guérilla urbaine, euh, le multiculturalisme et autres calambres d'aile. La question que pose Adrienne Marc est tout simplement faut-il américaniser la société française À quoi elle répond oui pour la moraliser. Mais tu dis quoi, quoi La France a oh toujours été le monde et continuera à le faire malgré la haine que vous distillez. Non, je vous en prie, messieurs, calmez-vous, monsieur. Vous êtes un fasciste Non oh, oh, Le peuple nous a élus pour barrer la route oh, ah, 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 A vile pig. Hey. 
Oh, it's you. Oh, is she? Oh, she was pretty shaken up. Come on in. No, 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 I'll, I'll leave you. Um, I left Suzanne waiting with a house full of guests. Oh! Hello. <laughs> hey. Were you watching the, uh... Oh, yeah, yes, I, I was watching at home. That's why I came round. I couldn't really follow it all, but it seemed like it was... Yeah, it was pretty nasty, a very unwarranted attack. Yeah. So she has cat, is one of the... Oh, yeah, she, she's... She's fine now. Okay, we'll just tell her that the friendly ghost came by. Ghost. Yeah. I have it all now, Millie. Not just the 99 and a half, but really 100. I've always known you were my guardian angel, the shining light to read my map by. And with your magic, it has all come together for me. Not only the present, but the past, too. I have repossessed my past. Thought you might like to see this. It's entitled, Call Her France. The vindictive statements pronounced on television by Ashiel Emery disgusted me so much that I was overwhelmed with anger. Strangely, we who are artists, natural talkers, fall into silence when these strange, non-human voices insist on being heard. Alors que ces étranges voix inhumaines réclament d'être entendues. Mais nous, les vrais dépositaires de la parole, nous avons aussi notre pouvoir, notre courage et notre foi. Pour attaquer Adrienne Marc, il faut être large. Exiger plus de quelqu'un qui vous a déjà tout donné, c'est méprisant. Mais ne lui apporter pour toute récompense que jalousie, ignorance, haine, c'est encore pire. C'est contre cela qu'Adrienne a lutté toute sa vie. Elle a éclairé de son intelligence ce qui, sans elle, n'aurait été que ténèbres. De sa générosité, ce qui sans elle n'aurait été que mesquinerie. Oh, come on, give that to me. <laughs> not please. a bit embarrassed. Why not? To you, my dear Adrienne. Ah. To you all. Oh, I, <laughs> I have a toast. In a world of remakes, remake life. Let it flow around you, let it astound you. I'm so glad I found you. I want to make a film about you. Oui. Good idea. Now, I want to make a toast. Life is nothing but change, and yet nothing I could keep I've kept. It appalls me to think about what I had to let go of. I always like the name Mark, my mother's name. I never let it go. Drunk, sober, in Hollywood, in New York, with fools or wise men, I've always been Adrienne Mark. Yet. The simple fact is that Elliot Spencer and I have decided to reconnect our lives. <laughs> Good I am. Uh, Marks and Spencer. Marks and Spencer. Oh, Marks and Spencer. Oh, Marks and Spencer. <laughs> and so it ends as it began with love and laughter. So my dad, uh, you two, just control yourselves for a just minute. Just a second. Please. So my darling, and to the honor you are going to receive this evening at the festival. International Cannes Film Festival honors some of the greatest writers in the world. Adrian Mark, whom you all know, leads a distinguished group of authors such as Anne de Ross, Margaret Kent, Ruth O'Brien, among others. Yes! Yes! This yes. year's theme of the festival oh, yeah. is writers. You gotta have a hundred. Of writing. Yes. One should always be brave in one's own terms, and not anyone else's. At last, I'm beginning to tell the story. Je m'appelle Adrienne Markovsky. <laughs> 